Underwater acoustics is the study of the propagation of sound in water and the interaction of the mechanical waves that constitute sound with the water, its contents and its boundaries. The water may be in the ocean, a lake, a river or a tank. Typical frequencies associated with underwater acoustics are between 10 Hz and 1 MHz. The propagation of sound in the ocean at frequencies lower than 10 Hz is usually not possible without penetrating deep into the seabed, whereas frequencies above 1 MHz are rarely used because they are absorbed very quickly. Underwater acoustics is sometimes known as hydroacoustics. The field of underwater acoustics is closely related to a number of other fields of acoustic study, including sonar, transduction, acoustic signal processing, acoustical oceanography, bioacoustics, and physical acoustics. Topic: History Underwater sound has probably been used by marine animals for millions of years. The science of underwater acoustics began in 1490, when Leonardo da Vinci wrote the following. If you cause your ship to stop and place the head of a long tube in the water and place the outer extremity to your ear, you will hear ships at a great distance from you. In 1687 Isaac Newton wrote his Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy which included the first mathematical treatment of sound. The next major step in the development of underwater acoustics was made by Daniel Collodon, a Swiss physicist, and Charles Sturm, a French mathematician. In 1826, on Lake Geneva, they measured the elapsed time between a flash of light and the sound of a submerged ship's bell heard using an underwater listening horn. They measured a sound speed of 1,435 meters per second over a 17 kilometers km distance, providing the first quantitative measurement of sound speed in water. The result they obtained was within about 2% of currently accepted values. In 1877 Lord Rayleigh wrote the theory of sound and established modern acoustic theory. The sinking of Titanic in 1912 and the start of World War I provided the impetus for the next wave of progress in underwater acoustics. Systems for detecting icebergs and U-boats were developed. Between 1912 and 1914, a number of echolocation patents were granted in Europe and the U.S., culminating in Reginald A. Fessenden's Echo Ranger in 1914. Pioneering work was carried out during this time in France by Paul Langevin and in Britain by A. B. Wood and Associates. The development of both active ASDIC and passive sonar sound navigation and ranging proceeded apace during the war, driven by the first large-scale deployments of submarines. Other advances in underwater acoustics included the development of acoustic mines. In 1919, the first scientific paper on underwater acoustics was published, theoretically describing the refraction of sound waves produced by temperature and salinity gradients in the ocean. The range predictions of the paper were experimentally validated by propagation loss measurements. The next two decades saw the development of several applications of underwater acoustics. The fathometer, or depth sounder, was developed commercially during the 1920s. Originally natural materials were used for the transducers, but by the 1930s sonar systems incorporating piezoelectric transducers made from synthetic materials were being used for passive listening systems and for active echo ranging systems. These systems were used to good effect during World War II by both submarines and anti-submarine vessels. Many advances in underwater acoustics were made which were summarized later in the series Physics of Sound in the Sea, published in 1946. After World War II, the development of sonar systems was driven largely by the Cold War, resulting in advances in the theoretical and practical understanding of underwater acoustics, aided by computer-based techniques. Topic: 
Topic Theory Topic Sound waves in water, bottom of sea A sound wave propagating underwater consists of alternating compressions and rarefactions of the water. These compressions and rarefactions are detected by a receiver, such as the human ear or a hydrophone, as changes in pressure. These waves may be man-made or naturally generated. Topic. Speed of sound, density and impedance The speed of sound c display style c ie the longitudinal motion of wavefronts is related to frequency f display style f and wavelength lambda display style lambda of a wave by c equals f Lambda display style c equals f c d o t lambda. This is different from the particle velocity u display style u, which refers to the motion of molecules in the medium due to the sound and relates the plane wave pressure p display style p to the fluid density rho display style rho and sound speed c display style c by p equals c u rho display style p equals c c d o t u c d o t rho the product of c display style c and rho display style rho from the above formula is known as the characteristic acoustic impedance the acoustic power energy per second crossing unit area is known as the intensity of the wave and for a plane wave the average intensity is given by i equals q 2 Rho C Display style I equals Q carrot two Rho C where Q Display style Q is the root mean square acoustic pressure. At one kilohertz, the wavelength in water is about one point five meters. Sometimes the term sound velocity is used but this is incorrect as the quantity is a scalar. The large impedance contrast between air and water, the ratio is about 3600 and the scale of surface roughness means that the sea surface behaves as an almost perfect reflector of sound at frequencies below 1 kHz. Sound speed in water exceeds that in air by a factor of 4.4 and the density ratio is about 820. Topic. Absorption of sound Absorption of low-frequency sound is weak. See Technical Guides, Calculation of Absorption of Sound in Seawater for an online calculator. The main cause of sound attenuation in fresh water, and at high frequency in sea water above 100 kHz is viscosity. Important additional contributions at lower frequency in seawater are associated with the ionic relaxation of boric acid up to C, 10 kHz and magnesium sulfate C, 10 kHz to 100 kHz. Sound may be absorbed by losses at the fluid boundaries. Near the surface of the sea losses can occur in a bubble layer or in ice, while at the bottom sound can penetrate into the sediment and be absorbed. Topic. Sound reflection and scattering Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Boundary interactions. Both the water surface and bottom are reflecting and scattering boundaries. Topic: <laughs> Surface. For many purposes the sea air surface can be thought of as a perfect reflector. The impedance contrast is so great that little energy is able to cross this boundary. Acoustic pressure waves reflected from the sea surface experience a reversal in phase, often stated as either a pi phase change or a 180 DEG phase change. This is represented mathematically by assigning a reflection coefficient of minus 1 instead of plus 1 to the sea surface, at high frequency above about 1 kHz or when the sea is rough, some of the incident sound is scattered, and this is taken into account by assigning a reflection coefficient whose magnitude is less than 1. For example, close to normal incidence, the reflection coefficient becomes R equals minus e minus 2 k 2 h 2 s i n 2 a display style r equals e caret 2 k caret 2 h caret 2 sin caret 2 a where h is the RMS wave height, a further complication is the presence of wind-generated bubbles or fish close to the sea surface. The bubbles can also form plumes that absorb some of the incident and scattered sound, and scatter some of the sound themselves. Topic. Seabed the acoustic impedance mismatch between water and the bottom is generally much less than at the surface and is more complex. It depends on the bottom material types and depth of the layers. Theories have been developed for predicting the sound propagation in the bottom in this case, for example by Bio and by Buckingham. Topic. At target. The reflection of sound at a target whose dimensions are large compared with the acoustic wavelength depends on its size and shape as well as the impedance of the target relative to that of water. Formulae have been developed for the target strength of various simple shapes as a function of angle of sound incidence. More complex shapes may be approximated by combining these simple ones. Topic. Propagation of sound Underwater acoustic propagation depends on many factors. The direction of sound propagation is determined by the sound speed gradients in the water. This is an important thing that happens in water, because the speed of sound travel in water with velocity regular. In the sea the vertical gradients are generally much larger than the horizontal ones. Combining this with a tendency towards increasing sound speed at increasing depth, due to the increasing pressure in the deep sea, causes a reversal of the sound speed gradient in the thermocline, creating an efficient waveguide at the depth, corresponding to the minimum sound speed. The sound speed profile may cause regions of low sound intensity called shadow zones, and regions of high intensity called caustics. These may be found by ray tracing methods. At equator and temperate latitudes in the ocean, the surface temperature is high enough to reverse the pressure effect, such that a sound speed minimum occurs at depth of a few hundred meters. The presence of this minimum creates a special channel known as deep sound channel, previously known as the so far sound fixing and ranging channel, permitting guided propagation of underwater sound for thousands of kilometers without interaction with the sea surface or the seabed. Another phenomenon in the deep sea is the formation of sound focusing areas, known as convergence zones. In this case sound is refracted downward from a near-surface source and then back up again. 
The horizontal distance from the source at which this occurs depends on the positive and negative sound speed gradients. A surface duct can also occur in both deep and moderately shallow water when there is upward refraction, for example due to cold surface temperatures. Propagation is by repeated sound bounces off the surface. In general, as sound propagates underwater there is a reduction in the sound intensity over increasing ranges, though in some circumstances a gain can be obtained due to focusing. Propagation loss, sometimes referred to as transmission loss, is a quantitative measure of the reduction in sound intensity between two points, normally the sound source and a distant receiver. If I s display style I underscore s is the far field intensity of the source referred to a point one meter from its acoustic center and I R display style I underscore R is the intensity at the receiver then the propagation loss is given by P L equals 10 log I s I R Display style place equals ten log I underscore S I underscore R. In this equation I R Display style I underscore R is not the true acoustic intensity at the receiver, which is a vector quantity, but a scalar equal to the equivalent plane wave intensity EPWI of the sound field. The EPWI is defined as the magnitude of the intensity of a plane wave of the same RMS pressure as the true acoustic field. At short range the propagation loss is dominated by spreading while at long range it is dominated by absorption and or scattering losses. An alternative definition is possible in terms of pressure instead of intensity, giving P L equals 20 log P S P R display style place equals 20 log P underscore s P underscore R where P s display style P underscore s is the RMS acoustic pressure in the far field of the projector, scaled to a standard distance of 1 meter, and P R is the RMS pressure at the receiver position. These two definitions are not exactly equivalent because the characteristic impedance at the receiver may be different from that at the source. Because of this, the use of the intensity definition leads to a different sonar equation to the definition based on a pressure ratio. If the source and receiver are both in water, the difference is small. Topic. Propagation modeling The propagation of sound through water is described by the wave equation, with appropriate boundary conditions. A number of models have been developed to simplify propagation calculations. These models include ray theory, normal mode solutions, and parabolic equation simplifications of the wave equation. Each set of solutions is generally valid and computationally efficient in a limited frequency and range regime, and may involve other limits as well. Ray theory is more appropriate at short range and high frequency, while the other solutions function better at long range and low frequency. Various empirical and analytical formulae have also been derived from measurements that are useful approximations. Topic. Reverberation Transient sounds result in a decaying background that can be of much larger duration than the original transient signal. 
The cause of this background, known as reverberation, is partly due to scattering from rough boundaries and partly due to scattering from fish and other biota. For an acoustic signal to be detected easily, it must exceed the reverberation level as well as the background noise level. Topic. Doppler shift If an underwater object is moving relative to an underwater receiver, the frequency of the received sound is different from that of the sound radiated or reflected by the object. This change in frequency is known as a Doppler shift. The shift can be easily observed in active sonar systems, particularly narrow band ones, because the transmitter frequency is known, and the relative motion between sonar and object can be calculated. Sometimes the frequency of the radiated noise a tonal, may also be known, in which case the same calculation can be done for passive sonar. For active systems the change in frequency is 0.69 Hz per knot per kilohertz and half this for passive systems as propagation is only one way. The shift corresponds to an increase in frequency for an approaching target. Topic. Intensity fluctuations Though acoustic propagation modeling generally predicts a constant received sound level, in practice there are both temporal and spatial fluctuations. These may be due to both small and large-scale environmental phenomena. These can include sound speed profile fine structure and frontal zones as well as internal waves. Because in general there are multiple propagation paths between a source and receiver, small phase changes in the interference pattern between these paths can lead to large fluctuations in sound intensity. Non-linearity In water, especially with air bubbles, the change in density due to a change in pressure is not exactly linearly proportional. As a consequence for a sinusoidal wave input additional harmonic and subharmonic frequencies are generated. When two sinusoidal waves are input, sum and difference frequencies are generated. The conversion process is greater at high source levels than small ones. Because of the non-linearity there is a dependence of sound speed on the pressure amplitude so that large changes travel faster than small ones. Thus a sinusoidal waveform gradually becomes a sawtooth one with a steep rise and a gradual tail. Use is made of this phenomenon in parametric sonar and theories have been developed to account for this, e.g. by Westerfield. Topic. Measurements Sound in water is measured using a hydrophone, which is the underwater equivalent of a microphone. A hydrophone measures pressure fluctuations, and these are usually converted to sound pressure level SPL, which is a logarithmic measure of the mean square acoustic pressure. Measurements are usually reported in one of three forms. RMS acoustic pressure in micropascals or dB re 1 micropascal RMS acoustic pressure in a specified bandwidth usually octaves or thirds of octave dB re 1 micropascal spectral density means square pressure per unit bandwidth in micropascals squared per hertz dB re 1 micropascal squared per hertz the scale for acoustic pressure in water differs from that used for sound in air in air the reference pressure is 20 micropascals rather than 1 micropascal for the same numerical value of SPL, the intensity of a plane wave power per unit area, proportional to mean square sound pressure divided by acoustic impedance in air is about 202 times 3,600. Equals 1,440,000 times higher than in water. Similarly, the intensity is about the same if the SPL is 61.6 decibels higher in the water. 
equals topic sound speed equals approximate values for fresh water and seawater respectively at atmospheric pressure are 1450 and 1500 meters per second for the sound speed and 1000 and 1030 kilograms per cubic meter for the density the speed of sound in water increases with increasing pressure, temperature and salinity. The maximum speed in pure water under atmospheric pressure is attained at about 74 degrees Celsius. Sound travels slower in hotter water after that point, the maximum increases with pressure. Online calculators can be found at Technical Guides, Speed of Sound in Sea Water and Technical Guides, Speed of Sound in Pure Water. Topic. Absorption Many measurements have been made of sound absorption in lakes and the ocean. See Technical Guides, Calculation of Absorption of Sound in Seawater for an online calculator. Topic. Ambient noise Measurement of acoustic signals are possible if their amplitude exceeds a minimum threshold, determined partly by the signal processing used and partly by the level of background noise. Ambient noise is that part of the received noise that is independent of the source, receiver and platform characteristics. This it excludes reverberation and towing noise for example. The background noise present in the ocean, or ambient noise, has many different sources and varies with location and frequency. At the lowest frequencies, from about 0.1 Hz to 10 Hz, ocean turbulence and microseisms are the primary contributors to the noise background. Typical noise spectrum levels decrease with increasing frequency from about 140 decibels re 1 micropascal squared per hertz at 1 hertz to about 30 decibels re 1 micropascal squared per hertz at 100 kilohertz. Distant ship traffic is one of the dominant noise sources in most areas for frequencies of around 100 Hz, while wind-induced surface noise is the main source between 1 kHz and 30 kHz. At very high frequencies, above 100 kHz, thermal noise of water molecules begins to dominate. The thermal noise spectral level at 100 kHz is 25 dB re 1 micropascal squared per hertz. The spectral density of thermal noise increases by 20 dB per decade approximately 6 dB per octave. Transient sound sources also contribute to ambient noise. These can include intermittent geological activity, such as earthquakes and underwater volcanoes, rainfall on the surface, and biological activity. Biological sources include cetaceans especially blue, fin and sperm whales, certain types of fish, and snapping shrimp. Rain can produce high levels of ambient noise. However the numerical relationship between rain rate and ambient noise level is difficult to determine because measurement of rain rate is problematic at sea. Topic. Reverberation Many measurements have been made of sea surface, bottom and volume reverberation. Empirical models have sometimes been derived from these. A commonly used expression for the band 0.4 to 6.4 kHz is that by Chapman and Harris. It is found that a sinusoidal waveform is spread in frequency due to the surface motion. For bottom reverberation a Lambert's law is found often to apply approximately, for example C. McKenzie. Volume reverberation is usually found to occur mainly in layers, which change depth with the time of day, e.g., see Marshall and Chapman. The undersurface of ice can produce strong reverberation when it is rough, see for example Milne. Topic. 
Bottom loss Bottom loss has been measured as a function of grazing angle for many frequencies in various locations, for example those by the U.S. Marine Geophysical Survey. The loss depends on the sound speed in the bottom which is affected by gradients and layering and by roughness. Graphs have been produced for the loss to be expected in particular circumstances. In shallow water bottom loss often has the dominant impact on long-range propagation. At low frequencies sound can propagate through the sediment then back into the water. Topic. Underwater hearing Topic. Comparison with airborne sound levels As with airborne sound, sound pressure level underwater is usually reported in units of decibels, but there are some important differences that make it difficult and often inappropriate to compare SPL in water with SPL in air. These differences include Difference in reference pressure, 1 micropascal, 1 micropascal or 1 millionth of a pascal instead of 20 micropascals Difference in interpretation, there are two schools of thought, one maintaining that pressures should be compared directly, and the other that one should first convert to the intensity of an equivalent plane wave. Difference in hearing sensitivity, any comparison with a weighted sound in air needs to take into account the differences in hearing sensitivity, either of a human diver or other animal. Topic. Human hearing Topic. Hearing sensitivity The lowest audible SPL for a human diver with normal hearing is about 67 dB re 1 micropascal, with greatest sensitivity occurring at frequencies around 1 kHz. This corresponds to a sound intensity 5.4 dB, or 3.5 times, higher than the threshold in air see measurements above. Topic. Safety thresholds High levels of underwater sound create a potential hazard to human divers. Guidelines for exposure of human divers to underwater sound are reported by the Solmar Project of the NATO Undersea Research Center. Human divers exposed to SPL above 154 dB re 1 micropascal in the frequency range 0.6 to 2.5 kHz are reported to experience changes in their heart rate or breathing frequency. Diver aversion to low frequency sound is dependent upon sound pressure level and center frequency. Topic: Other species. Topic: Aquatic mammals. Dolphins and other toothed whales are known for their acute hearing sensitivity, especially in the frequency range 5 to 50 kHz. Several species have hearing thresholds between 30 and 50 dB re 1 micropascal in this frequency range. For example, the hearing threshold of the killer whale occurs at an RMS acoustic pressure of 0.02 mPa and frequency 15 kHz, corresponding to an SPL threshold of 26 dB re 1 MPa. High levels of underwater sound create a potential hazard to marine and amphibious animals. The effects of exposure to underwater noise are reviewed by Southall et al. Topic. Fish The hearing sensitivity of fish is reviewed by Laddich and Fay. 
The hearing threshold of the soldier fish is 0.32 mPa (50 decibels re 1 micropascal) at 1.3 kHz, whereas the lobster has a hearing threshold of 1.3 Pa at 70 Hz (122 decibels re 1 micropascal). The effects of exposure to underwater noise are reviewed by Popper et al. Topic. Applications of underwater acoustics Topic. Sonar Sonar is the name given to the acoustic equivalent of radar. Pulses of sound are used to probe the sea, and the echoes are then processed to extract information about the sea, its boundaries and submerged objects. An alternative use, known as passive sonar, attempts to do the same by listening to the sounds radiated by underwater objects. Topic. Underwater communication The need for underwater acoustic telemetry exists in applications such as data harvesting for environmental monitoring, communication with and between manned and unmanned underwater vehicles, transmission of diver speech, etc. A related application is underwater remote control, in which acoustic telemetry is used to remotely actuate a switch or trigger an event. A prominent example of underwater remote control are acoustic releases, devices that are used to return sea floor deployed instrument packages or other payloads to the surface per remote command at the end of a deployment. Acoustic communications form an active field of research. With significant challenges to overcome, especially in horizontal, shallow water channels. Compared with radio telecommunications, the available bandwidth is reduced by several orders of magnitude. Moreover, the low speed of sound causes multipath propagation to stretch over time delay intervals of tens or hundreds of milliseconds, as well as significant Doppler shifts and spreading. Often acoustic communication systems are not limited by noise, but by reverberation and time variability beyond the capability of receiver algorithms. The fidelity of underwater communication links can be greatly improved by the use of hydrophone arrays, which allow processing techniques such as adaptive beamforming and diversity combining. Topic. Underwater navigation and tracking Underwater navigation and tracking is a common requirement for exploration and work by divers, ROV, autonomous underwater vehicles AUV, manned submersibles and submarines alike. Unlike most radio signals which are quickly absorbed, sound propagates far underwater and at a rate that can be precisely measured or estimated. It can thus be used to measure distances between a tracked target and one or multiple reference of baseline stations precisely, and triangulate the position of the target, sometimes with centimeter accuracy. Starting in the 1960s, this has given rise to underwater acoustic positioning systems which are now widely used. Topic seismic exploration Seismic exploration involves the use of low-frequency sound. Topic. Weather and climate observation Acoustic sensors can be used to monitor the sound made by wind and precipitation. For example, an acoustic rain gauge is described by Nystoon. Lightning strikes can also be detected. Acoustic thermometry of ocean climate uses low-frequency sound to measure the global ocean temperature. Topic. Oceanography Large-scale ocean features can be detected by acoustic tomography. Bottom characteristics can be measured by side scan sonar and sub bottom profiling. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Marine biology. Due to its excellent propagation properties, underwater sound is used as a tool to aid the study of marine life, from microplankton to the blue whale. Echo sounders are often used to provide data on marine life abundance, distribution, and behavior information. Echo sounders, also referred to as hydroacoustics is also used for fish location, quantity, size, and biomass. Acoustic telemetry is also used for monitoring fish and marine wildlife. An acoustic transmitter is attached to the fish sometimes internally, while an array of receivers listen to the information conveyed by the sound wave. This enables the researchers to track the movements of individuals in a small medium scale. Pistol shrimp create sonoluminescent cavitation bubbles that reach up to 5000 K, 4700 degrees Celsius. Topic: Particle physics. A neutrino is a fundamental particle that interacts very weakly with other matter. For this reason, it requires detection apparatus on a very large scale, and the ocean is sometimes used for this purpose. In particular, it is thought that ultra-high-energy neutrinos in seawater can be detected acoustically. Topic. See also Acoustic tags Acoustic telemetry Bioacoustics Hydroacoustics Ocean tracking network Refraction sound, Sonar Underwater acoustic positioning system SOFAR channel Underwater Acoustic Wireless Communication System European Conference on Underwater Acoustics <laughs> <laughs>